Hello Year 5 and welcome to your English lesson for today. So we're going to do a whole week of spag focus work just to recap some of the skills that we've had a look at since we've been in lockdown because I think there's a couple of them that I think we might need to have done a little bit of a recap on so we can warm our brains up before we really crack on with the hard work when we return next week. So we're going to look at dashes today. Okay, this is one of our parentheses. So we have our dashes, we have our brackets and we have our colons commas sorry beg your pardon commas so we're going to have a look at dashes today because this is the one that we've used a few times in some of our english lessons we haven't really recapped it so the aim today is to have a go at using the parenthesis you need to be able to explain that da dashes surround additional information and that additional information is that almost the subordinate clause that we can take out of our sentence we need to be able to explain how they can be used okay on their own okay as single dashes or even as a pair of dashes and then we need to see if we can work out where a dash actually belongs because sometimes we stick them in there and think well actually is that the most appropriate place to put them and why have i put it there what's the point and then you're going to have a go at creating your own sentences using dashes and then explain the difference between the dashes the paired commas and our brackets okay so let's think about the double dash okay so the double dash when we use our two dashes okay so a dash can perform a very similar function to what brackets do, okay? And they effectively surround, okay, that additional information within a sentence, okay? For example, the train, which was late, was heading to Paris. Now, we know that this is a relative clause because it starts with the word which. Now, when we've been looking at them this week and used them as embedded clauses, we've used our commas. But they have the same effect, okay? Now, we must make sure that we know that these are different between dashes and a hyphen. OK, so dashes are long marks and they're used between the words. OK, and there's usually space on either side. OK, so it symbolizes that they're surrounding a subordinate clause. OK, hyphens are very short and they're used in the middle of words. So, you know, when we've looked at grief stricken or blood spattered or mud spattered in some of my lessons. That little line in between those two words that's joining them together is called a hyphen. Hence, why well, they're a hyphenated word. OK, and there's no spaces in between either of those words. OK. Now, an actual interesting fact in you, you may not know what one of these is, okay? Now, I never use one of these, okay? These are still before my generation, but I know what they are. This is called a typewriter. So this is like the very first, you know, example of a, a keyboard where you could touch type like on a, on a computer. Now, on the old-fashioned typewriters, two hyphens typed one, um, typed one after the other. Uh, were used instead of a dash, so they didn't have a dash line on their keyboards. So if you've ever looked down at your keyboards, now mine's somewhere up near my numbers, so if I go along my top numbers of one all the way to zero, there's a little key on mine that's got a big line, it's got a little line. Okay, now sometimes you can use that as an underscore, but if I was to press that in one way, it's going to give me a hyphen, and if I hold down another button and press it again, it's going to give me a little dash, okay? Now for them to be able to do that, they'd have to put them right next to each other. Now we use the dash to add additional information and that extra information is called a parenthesis, okay? So, for example, you've got the man who was dressed plainly so he would not be noticed in a black suit. Now you can see here, this isn't an embedded clause. This isn't a relative clause, but it's still additional information, okay? So there's a space either side here of where the dashes are Okay, and if I was to hook onto those dashes and take them out and get rid of them, my sentence would still make dense sense because it's extra information. It's not the main information to make the sentence make sense. It's extra. Okay, so this part of the sentence, like it says, gives extra information. Like we said, we can hook it and we can chuck it and get rid of it. Now, the sentence would still make sense. Okay, so I could say the man was plainly dressed in a black suit. That still makes sense without that additional information. Okay. Now, when that parenthesis is completely removed, the sentence is still grammatically correct, like the one I just read. The man was plainly dressed in a black suit. That still makes sense. It's grammatically correct. And I've still got my entire main clause with the information with my subject, my object, and my verb. Okay. Now, the parenthesis can be separated from the rest of the sentence using our different types of parentheses, so our commas, dashes, or brackets. Now, the two dashes can mark extra information inserted into a sentence, which is grammatically complete without it, okay? So it's when we add it to a sentence where had it not been there, it would still make sense, okay? For example, James Bond, though I can't quite believe how, jumped straight over the car, rolled and ran off into the woods, okay? So although that's a little extra comment, a little extra detail, okay? They draw more attention to that extra information because it's obvious. 
you can see that's additional information because it's broken up into its own teeny tiny little bubble. You imagine the parentheses of your dashes, it almost creates like a little bubble, you wrapped it up, okay? And it makes it easier. So when you first came up on the side, if you now look at it again, I'm looking at that middle part, that is my extra information. And that becomes the focus point for our reader, okay? So I want you to now have a go at using a dash like this, on your whiteboard. Now, if you don't have a whiteboard, you've got your pen or you've got your paper at home, okay? So I want you to now create a sentence about James Bond, which uses dashes to add parentheses. I want you to now write a sentence of your own. Pause the video and have a go. Okay, so we're now gonna do a little quiz, okay? So, show the answers to the questions on your whiteboard. So you can do it down your piece of paper or you can just do it in your head as we go along. I want you to write the correct letter down or say the correct letter in your head, okay? That's gonna tell me the answers to my questions. So. We're going to click to see if each sentence correctly uses dashes or parentheses. So first of all, what I want you to do is pause the video. I just want you to read the sentences of A, B and C. Okay, so now what you need to think of, which one of those has used the dashes correctly? Okay, well, let's just double check then, shall we here? So this one here, mm -mm, incorrect. Okay, Sumatran tigers sadly now in danger of extinction can swim very well because they're paws. We can't have one there after a conjunction. We need that conjunction because that's part of our subordinate clause. Let's have a look at this one. Oh, no, this one's incorrect as well. Sumatran tigers sadly now in danger of extinction can swim. If I took that out, it would say Sumatran tigers sadly now can swim. That doesn't make sense. So the correct one is this one here. Okay, Sumatran tigers can swim very well because their paws are webbed. That's my sentence. My additional information is sadly now in danger. Okay, so well done if you got those ones correct. What about these ones? Pause the video, have a read of these ones, see if you can identify the correct use of the dashes. Okay, well, let's have a look at A. It is A. Okay, let's have a look at Y. So zebras, if we take out our parentheses, zebras can reach speeds of 40 miles per hour when running. That's my clue. If you read the sentences without the um, without the parentheses in the middle, if it makes sense, then it must have been used correctly. Here would be zebras well known for their black and white stripes when running. Why well, doesn't make any sense? Zebras well known can reach speeds of 40 miles per hour. That still doesn't make any sense. So here we can see when we take out that parenthesis, our sentence still makes sense. Wonder if you can have a go at this one. Pause the video, have a read of them. Which one's the correct one? Use that skill. Read the sentences without the parentheses and see which one makes sense. Okay. So meerkats, those extraordinary digging creatures in large groups. That doesn't make any sense. Meerkats, those extraordinary... Meerkats live together in large groups. Now that sentence sounds like it makes sense. Let's check the large one. Meerkats in large groups. Well, that's an absolute fat no. That's definitely not going to make sense. Meerkats live together in large groups. So meerkats, those extraordinary digging creatures. Yeah, that does. Because we are, we've already got our subject here, okay? And we've got our verb and what they do, okay? This is extra information. This is describing the meerkats, the meerkats, those extraordinary digging creatures. So if that technique helps you better be able to pull them out, then you've been able to identify the correct answers. Have a go at this last one here. Have a look, go at the penguins one. Okay, well, we know, okay, that it's the first one. Okay, penguins spend very little time on land. That additional information has been punctuated correctly. These two here are incorrect. Okay, because we don't have the punctuation put in the correct places for those ones at all. Okay, right, I'm going to skip these ones here. Okay, because I think, we, I think we're all right with those ones for now. So the dash is a punctuation mark, which can be used when you want to emphasize additional information. So you want to make it really clear that it's that extra additional information. Now we've learned that dashes can be used in pairs, okay? And we use them to almost represent like subordinate clauses, the extra information, okay? Now, whereas brackets must always be in pairs, you can't ever just have one bracket, okay? You can use dashes on their own, okay? Now one dash is required if the parenthesis comes at the end of a sentence. Now you've seen me do this before in my last two paragraphs that we've done in English last week. Now the dash found by itself can be used to separate something dramatic and it could also be if you're writing down a contrasting idea or if you're expanding on the sentence, okay? So the idea is to almost shock or surprise that reader with that little extra snippet at the end of that sentence. So I think I did one the other day where the guy was dying and I said blah 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 hyphen scared frightened and alone. So I just added that little hint of that drama on the end just using that dash, 
okay? For example, it was a long wait, perhaps the longest of his life. So I've added additional information to almost expand. Well, why was it a long wait? How was it a long wait? Well, it was the longest wait of his life. Okay, so the sentence would still make sense without it. Okay, it's almost like attaching similarly two main clauses together. Okay, but it adds it, it takes out that extra word there. So there should be a space before and after the dash. So it's still not a hyphen, even though it's one. It's not joining two words to make one word, okay? It's not a hyphenated word. So it still has to have that space either side. Now, the information creates that extra surprise at the end of the sentence, doesn't it? Oh, I went shopping today and I took, it was a really long wait in the queue, like perhaps the longest of my life, okay? So you're just expanding that additional information. So what I want you to do now is I want you to have a go at doing one of these three worksheets, okay? Now, I've sent home... Uh, one of these worksheets. Okay, now I have I have sent I've sent home almost the hardest one there Okay, because I think you can all have a go at doing that worksheet now If you've not printed off the worksheet or you do not have access to printing it Please 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 if you're doing this at home do not copy the entire sheet down Okay, some of you haven't been able to print have been copying down all like the extra questions You don't need to do that. Just do questions one to five and follow what the task is, okay? So you've got the two examples on there to show you. All you need to write on your paper is five questions, okay, in five sentences, okay? So have a go at doing those, and then hop over to the next video where we're going to look a little bit more at our dashes.